Ahoy hoy, it's your boy Hawker back with another video, this time taking a look at OG and how they take mid on Mirage and turn it into some very effective A plays. I've been keeping my eye on OG recently at Flashpoint and I really like some of the stuff they've been doing on Mirage. So I figured I'd go ahead and put some of it into a video and you know what, I'm not going to waste your time, I'm just going to go right into it. These rounds all come from Flashpoint where OG were playing against Cloud9 and in this second round OG go ahead and go for the full spy and they get this early mid control with Alexi B and Valda working this position. Then they throw a stairs smoke as well as a jungle smoke into the A site and this allows Alexi B to completely isolate this player who's in jungle. He wins this first fight and then elsewhere you've got the other fights going the way of OG as well. Issa wins a critical 1v1 here against Woxic at CT and Woxic doesn't really look fully ready for this fight. And then the players at ramp can follow up pretty easily. Mantu gets another kill here and they can collapse onto this A bomb site. Nothing too fancy in this round, but I do really like how Alexi B values his life at the end here. He doesn't push in through connector. Instead, he actually plops down a more defensive smoke just to stay alive in this position because it's really difficult now for Alex to actually try and retake the site. You can see that he's constantly caught in no man's land. He doesn't really want to commit to the bomb site. And as soon as Alexi B gets this final kill, that's the round done and dusted. Into round 5, we get to see some really cool utility usage from OG in this round. Except for MBK, who drops his smoke at his feet at the start of the round, but just ignore that on the radar for now. OG end up putting two smokes on towards B short to try and fake a B execute. I think the idea behind this is to draw the attention of a player who could be on B short, or just to try and draw some sort of rotation towards the B site while Alexi B is getting boosted up into window to try to be the man who makes the play. On top of those smokes though, OG also put a smoke into the back side of connector, partly to make sure they can try and split the B site through short, but another effect this has is that Woxic, who's playing on ticket booth, wants to reposition, so he rotates back through CT and it potentially gives Alexi a chance to get a good timing window for a kill. It doesn't quite work out like that in this round as Alexi B almost gets caught off guard, but he still does a really solid job at using his utility to get through into this position and to be able to get a kill cutting off the rotation. The only problem for OG in this round is that over on the B site, their trades just aren't effective enough. Maybe this partly comes down to using so many of their nades earlier in the round, but realistically, I just think Cloud9 do a good job at isolating some of these fights, and unfortunately for OG, Alexi B's flank can't do enough. You can definitely see some cool concepts in play in this round, even if they don't win it. Heading into round 6, OG use a massive amount of utility on this early mid control, including a load of flashes to help Alexi get into window safely, and he does so. Woxic rotates away from window after being blinded towards the B site. Alexi B starts getting this flank going, but unfortunately, he's taken the MAC-10 for the faster movement speed, but this actually kind of costs him here, as he lines up two players, but he can only get the one kill. And then the other shame for OG in this round is that their players who were playing through mid can't get up short as quickly as they would have wanted, because S attack was staying in connector the entire time. This means that OG can't react to the B site quickly enough, they end up trying to push in through short too late, and Cloud9 have already rotated over, so OG don't win this round, but Alexi gets into a good position yet again. Round 9 is one of the rounds OG really impressed me with. They get the early mid control, as has been commonplace in the rounds so far, but then they put a smoke into window and a smoke in towards the backside of connector, which makes Woxic's AWP pretty useless. He has to rotate all the way back through CT, so he's going to struggle to have as much impact as quickly on this round. And because of where this smoke is positioned on the back side of connector, they're happy to just pop a flash over the top and go for a contact play to take jungle control and stairs control. And now OG have four players coming through mid towards the A site, which makes it so difficult for the CTs on the A site to hold. Then all of this ruckus at mid draws all the attention of the CTs towards that position. So Issa can just walk in through the ramp and he gets a really easy kill from this A ramp position onto an unsuspecting player. MBK also can get a kill onto the A site onto the other CT who is playing here. But I also want to give a lot of props to Mantu in this round. He's the man who actually throws the flash in the first place to pop the OG players towards the A site. 
And then his job is to watch the flank, make sure they don't lose control of the mid position. And I think a lot of authors wouldn't be happy with this role. But Mantu takes it on gladly, and he ends up closing out the round in style with a really nice 3k. So props to Mantu for doing his job well in this round. This is where we get to see some of those micro adaptations come through between these teams though. In the previous round, Woxic was getting caught around connector and window, and with the AWP, it's basically impossible to stop those players from pushing connector once those smokes go down. So instead, they put Essatag into connector with the rifle in this next round, and as soon as he can dodge this early flashbang, this connector position is so powerful. He can clean up this round, and even goes aggressive at the end here to dominate. So just goes to show the CTs can adapt to this sort of play to see even more of these small adaptations shine through in round number 13 where again Essatag is playing in connector but this time OG makes sure to molly this close side to force Essatag away from this position early. Then once Essatag sees this smoke land towards the backside of connector he knows that he's seen OG run this play before and he knows that the flash goes flying over the top of connector and therefore if he plays close in the smoke he's not actually going to get blinded so he goes ahead and sits in this smoke and does a really solid job at racking up these early frags. Fortunately for Essatag though, Mantu, the man who's throwing the flash in this strategy over the top of Connector, is able to follow up into Connector later on, get this trade kill, and then start to watch the flank. But more importantly, Alexi B is able to just pre-fire the stairs position, push up through stairs, and start taking the fights onto the site. And even though Essatag is in an advanced position, he's not in a good enough position to stop Alexi from pushing stairs. And then Alexi just does a fantastic job at picking and choosing these fights. He doesn't panic and start to try and focus on Essatag. He takes down both of these players on the bomb site, And it's another round where Alexi B is a real key to making sure OG can get the win. So yeah, lots of cool adaptations here between these two teams and a lot of rounds where you can see Alexi B is putting himself in key positions to make sure his team can win the round. I will add that Cloud9 weren't really putting much emphasis into holding mid in this game. They rarely went for a three-man mid stack, for example, to try and take this away from OG. There were still a lot of cool micro adaptations between the players here. And I've also got to give props to Yakinda, who at Flashpoint was so good at denying OG mid control. Alexi B even said that he was aware of some of these plays that Yakinda was going to try and make, but you see in these clips, he was getting away with it in so many rounds. So shout out to Yakinda, he's been killing it at Flashpoint. That is going to be me done for a nice quick video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you next time.